just a local background information about the infrastructure for enhancing, uh, I would say, integrated research and education. And this is about a multi-user um, facility. Uh, here we have example in my talk, which is uh, uh, terror grid. Uh, just to do a quick poll here, how many of you know about terror grid? All right, so Terragut does a pretty good job of broader impacts. Uh, but I still see we have uh, uh, more work to do. Um, like Terragut, there are many um, um, kinds of uh, infrastructure projects supported by NSF. Uh, but Terragut is uh, primarily focusing on high-end computing infrastructure and uh, just a little bit of background information. Uh, nowadays, Terragut has over 20 petabytes of storage space and over two petaflop computing facilities scattered uh, across 11 partner institutions. Uh, these institutions are linking among them themselves uh, using multi-dozens gigabit per second network. Uh, so uh, in my uh, research, um, I'm addressing the gap uh, between um, geographic information systems um, and cyber infrastructure. Uh, Terragood is uh, uh, a national flagship cyber infrastructure project sponsored by NSF. Uh, in geographic information systems, uh, some of you might be uh, familiar with, we're experiencing a gap between um, high-end uh, systems like uh, Google Earth and the Microsoft BIM platforms, which does uh, data management and uh, very high fidelity uh, vis uh, information visualization, but it does little about uh, analytical services and uh, simulation capabilities. Whereas uh, traditional GIS platforms like ESRI, uh, ArcGIS platform, does a lot of that creating cool maps. Uh, so my research is targeting that gap through cyber infrastructure to bring cyber infrastructure power uh, to the analytical capabilities of GIS. Um, so in my work, broader impact is actually a pretty natural component because if you think about uh, maps, uh, this is a very uh, straightforward venue to reach out to public. Uh, a lot of people love maps, um, at least what I found out. Uh, if you watch C-SPAN uh, in Congress, uh, I see increasing usage of maps when uh, um, political discussions are engaged for uh, getting ideas across. So one specific project I want to talk a little bit about here is the GISOF, which is uh, sitting on top of uh, two uh, cyber infrastructure projects in this country. One is Paragrid, I already mentioned. The other is uh, called Open Science Grid, which is uh, jointly funded by NSF and the Department of Energy. Uh, which uh, provides um, nowadays, I would say, several millions of computing jobs slots per week to support multidisciplinary science communities, uh, ranging from hydrogen physics to biology and the geospatial sciences in which I'm doing my work. And the TerraGrid also, within the NSF context, is nearly, I would say, covering every domain science. Um, research. So in terms of activities, uh, my uh, work is uh, not necessarily just um, in the context of infrastructure. Uh, actually, it's uh, spanning uh, most uh, broad impact areas uh, discussed by the NSF document. So one example I want to mention is um, we have a CPATH grant uh, led by uh, Lenny Pitt uh, from University of Illinois uh, working on this uh, informatics courses infusing into uh, multiple majors on our campus. Um, I have one course on the geospatial informatics targeting um, you know, over a dozen majors on our campus from undergraduate levels. Um, partner with institutions that serve underrepresented groups. Um, uh, we're trying to leverage our community consortiums in which we have uh, quite a few uh, underrepresented uh, groups, uh, institutions, and we are working to, um, to engage them and uh, 
present research and education results to public, and uh, we have also regular activities engaging Congress to, to do congressional briefing. Um, and it's uh, natural to use uh, maps and the GIS to get ideas across when um, uh, the discussions with the public or Congress are happening, when they show something uh, visually uh, accessible through maps, they say, oh, supercomputing power actually could produce this tangible results. Uh, so that's a very natural element we have when we do broader impact. So just some examples there. So how to make connections? Um, classroom, both virtual and physical classrooms, are very uh, effective. Uh, we are part of the worldwide university network that does a virtual seminar across five continents. Uh, we do regular seminars through that uh, mechanism to reach out a broader audience in the world. Uh, student research competition, Terabit conference. Last year we had uh, about 150 students uh, recruited to the conference thanks to the NSF support. Um, and uh, a few years ago we had a high school student competition. A very cool uh, student competition. This is one example of that. Does infectious disease distribution prediction. Um, this is already mentioned. If you want to join us, uh, there's URL. You could get yourself registered. Uh, there are actually similar activities, 35 uh, kind of gateways. What, what we call gateways is defined uh, by the Terrigan Project as a way to uh, reach out broader uh, science communities. So always look for uh, broader impact opportunities, and these are contact information. Thank you for your attention.